Well, hello. <clears throat> I've been talking all morning and I choose the moment I turned on my mic to actually have a little frog in my throat. But um, hi, hello, we're here. It is Saturday, which means it is podcast recording day. I wish I could get my crap together enough to do this on Friday, but I just can't. Uh, so here we are. Um, I'm not going to do all the normal stuff I usually do. I don't have a rundown. I, I didn't even open the document. <laughs> I know enough to know it's episode 56. Um, let's just have a chat. I've got my coffee here. I'm not going to do the usual stuff I usually do because I just want to talk today. It was a full week and uh, I want to chat a little bit about the week and a little bit about book stuff and kind of emote get down in the feelings. You know what I'm saying? So welcome back to the bookcast. This is my platform for sharing uh, the short fiction I haven't shared in months and <laughs> updates on what I'm reading and writing. I'm currently not writing a darn thing uh, for realsies. I did actually write uh, something short last week and I'll talk about that in a second. But if you are new here, we talk about books and writing. I am an Atlanta-based author of several, 12 at last count, Southern Black fiction romance novels featuring Black men and women. I don't know. I messed that all up. I don't have my rundown, so I don't know what I'm talking about currently. I write books with people that uh, kiss in them and fall in love, and uh, it's a love-hate relationship. <laughs> Uh, some, some, some days I love to hate it. Some days I just hate to love it. You can find them at booksbydlwhite.com. Thanks for joining. If this is a thing you like authors talking about writing and books and, um, all that kind of stuff. I'm, I'm happy that you're here. Uh, I am excited to be on this mic and talk about things. Like I mentioned, booksbydlwhite.com has all of the good stuff. All of my books are listed there, ebook, print, audio, if those formats are available. If you care, <laughs> and I'm not meaning that in a snarky way, but some readers like actually care about where they buy their books and how that affects the author. It does my heart good when you buy books direct from me. All of the links from booksbydlwhite.com slash books. Each book has a landing page. There are options to buy that book in whatever format it's available. You can also add it to your Goodreads or Storygraph. If I have room for Storygraph, there's also a sample there. If you're just not sure, you get like a good three to five chapters to dip your toe in. Booksbydlwhite.com slash books. Um, you can buy the books direct from me or if you don't particularly care. And I'm serious. I don't mean that in a snarky way. My books are not for sale anywhere. I don't want them to be on, on sale. If you want to buy them retail, you are more than welcome to. That's why I uploaded them there. You can buy them anywhere ebooks are sold. If there's a place you buy ebooks and my books are not there, shout me out a holler. I'll get them there if I can. Uh, Amazon, Barnes and Noble, Kobo, Google Play. I'm all up in that buy my books wherever you so desire. If you're looking for ebook, if you're looking for print, you can get them at resist booksellers or bookshop.org. I do have a small inventory here at the house, but I am honestly thinking about selling off my inventory and not really keeping books um, on hand. They don't move as fast as I would like them to. I've changed a lot of covers. And so uh, I'm actually going to probably try to get rid of what I have here um, and, and only keep like a personal inventory on hand and then do like a quarterly paperback sale where I just order a grip of books and, and ship them out. So that's a thought for the future. Uh, cause I just, I don't have room for a large inventory of paperbacks and I try to keep some on hand in case I get orders, but, um, I just, I just don't have room for that. I don't, I don't run that kind of operation here. It's not the kind of business uh, if you are looking for audio, I have four books in audio. I do believe they are on Hoopla, so you can borrow them there. Many of them are on Scribd. I'd say about half of them are on Scribd. I did get an email back from draft to digital about the whole Scribd situation, and they honestly just swap out what's available and what's not. So at some point, some books will be available and some books won't. Uh, to me, I just feel like it's not worth being on script if all my books aren't available. You know where all my audiobooks are available? Audible, if you're an Audible girly. 
Libro.fm, if you're a Libro girly or guy, person, human. Okay, let's be inclusive on this podcast, you know. Humans. Being, because sometimes your pets might listen to the book with you. You know what I'm saying? If you're an audiobook, being audible, Libro.fm has them. Also, Kobo Plus. If you are a member at Kobo Plus, all of my ebooks and all of my audiobooks are uploaded there. You can listen to your heart's content for, I think it's $11.99. You get audio and ebook on Kobo Plus. I just don't know why people aren't just beating down the door over there to be on Kobo Plus and to uh, be a member over there. Actually, I do. The, the payout is not, I mean, the payout on Amazon is really kind of crappy. The payout on Kobo Plus is worse. It's, it's, it's worse. And so I do know actually why people aren't quite over there yet, but you know, we'll see. Um, we'll see how it goes. It sure beats, um, feeling like Amazon picks on indie authors because they are the only demographic that can. Uh, they are the only authors that they can really retaliate against. And so they do. Every time readers think they are helping, they're not. They're, they're not because Amazon will make changes, but it will adversely affect independently published authors because they those are the only authors that they can control. This is not an Amazon rant podcast, though, DL. It just isn't. And so... Can that, you know what I'm saying? But that's what I'm saying. So I just wanted to chat today because it's been a week. It's been, it's been, it's been a week. I like to say there's no such thing as work life balance. It's work or it's life. And that's what this week was. I, uh, you know, I, I, I work a full time eight to four day job. It is the greatest thing ever. I really do really enjoy my job. Beverage Giant is a fun place to work. It is a lot of work. Um, It's not hard, but it is challenging and tedious. And um, there's a lot that goes into what I do. I enjoy it to my bones absolutely love my job, which is a good thing because I need it. Uh, I love that salary. I love a 401k. I love a pension. I love um, insurance and uh, retirement and, you know, life insurance, those kinds of things. They are great. So it is a good thing to really like your job. And I do. And what I do in my org is like the support structure. I I am needed, if I could toot my own horn. Anything that's happening that involves other people, if it's a, if it's a meeting inside the building, if it's an offsite meeting, if it's a, a, a any kind of like a collaboration, those are the kinds of things that I set up and. One of the divisions in the organization that I work in does a governance meeting four to five times a year. It is a large two to three day meeting where we bring in about 70 people and we have, you know, a big room and the table tents and printing out agendas and working with catering and working with meeting services and working with security, top to bottom, getting people into the building, into the meeting, out all of that good stuff. That's all me. And so four to five times a year, that's my, that's my show. That's my gig. And I'm like, I don't, I don't mean to make myself sound uh, super important, but literally if I'm not there, it doesn't happen. So maybe I am super important. I don't know. So, um, I mean, I'm not the one running the meeting, so I feel like my input is inconsequential. On the other hand, I'm going to say the meeting lead does not have a single clue how that room gets set up, how the food comes out on time, how we have have, happen to have coffee and beverages all day, um, how the table tents get on the table. He does know how the table tents get on the table because then he comes in and moves them around. Um, all that kind of stuff. I'm support. I rock at that. I thrive. Like that's, I love it. I love it. However, it's a lot of work. It's two months of prep, three days on site, usually one day for setup, 
and then two days just seven getting like getting there at 7 a.m leaving the building at 7 p.m type of work that was my week monday was set up a lot of running around a lot of conversations a lot of what's happening here nope that's wrong let's do that let's move this let's put this here checking in to make sure everything is scheduled and then tuesday is day one of a super long day uh started i think i got in the building at seven i left i left my house before it's 7 a.m i think i got there around 7 30 got myself all set up i actually ran two meetings on tuesday morning so i'm running back and forth between two rooms and we use Teams, um, so there's the virtual instance of people that have to attend virtually, and then there's the people in the room, and the Dom, can you do this, and can we get that, and what about this, and can you print this, and can I do this, and do we have a mailroom, can you just run on down to the basement and drop these in the mailbox? Yeah, love to, love to. So Tuesday was a very long, long day. Day one ended around 5.45, and then we have an evening cocktail reception, and so there's all of that. Um, I think I left the building at eight o'clock on Tuesday, back in the building around 730 on Wednesday morning for day two. And they, they all day, they just went all day. In fact, they had to have a working lunch because they were behind. So it just worked all through the day. Um, somebody kicked off a, something happened and they, and somebody popped a surge protector. And so half of my table didn't have power. Well, half of the room didn't have power and then um, they flipped the breaker and some of the power strips came back on and like one section of the table didn't. So I'm trying to get the power people in to like sneak into the meeting and take a look and just so happened that someone turned the power strip off. Yes, turn the power strip off and like things like people not using the microphone the meet like the meeting is recorded and so if you're not using a microphone nobody online can hear you and when we listen back to the recording to get action items and take notes we can't hear what's happening in the room and so trying to remind people to use their mics and then they get the mic and they sit three business days away from the mic so still nobody can hear you because you're not speaking into the mic Whew. so Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday were full, full days. Um, I did nothing but work. And then Thursday, Friday, it was just basically catch up, um, like digging back into all the other stuff that I do. Uh, I have another meeting coming up. Um, so I have a, like kind of a, a bye week. I don't watch sports, but I, the, a week a week when you don't play is a bye week. I don't know. I'm just guessing. Um, so I have this week and then the last week in September, I fly to Carmel, California for a week long meeting. Um, and that meeting's not my meeting. I don't do most of the setup. We use actually an agency for that. And it's like a three, a staff of three that's full-time working for us. Um, but that's an offsite meeting and, uh, I do a lot of work with that meeting, but thankfully it's not that's not it's not my show Phew. Uh, but I do have a show uh, at the end of October and then another big two to three day meeting at the end of December so that's like that's my life and like in between then we have our weekly meetings and you know a bunch of stuff we're already setting up for 2024 so I have meetings I have to set in front of the you know the big meetings and so um there's a lot happening over here. It's a lot of work and a little bit of life. And the life part is the writing and the reading and the hanging out with friends and the doing laundry and the making sure that I get time to relax. And there's so little of that when work is a lot like that. And so I try not to be back to back with those meetings. Like I try to take my breaks when I get them because I know there's another work heavy meeting coming up. And so we're, I mean, I'm just kind of in a time right now where I know I have a little bit of a break. And so I need to chill. I need to not put a lot of pressure on myself. I need to not be so busy with life that I'm tired and I can't put my all into work because it does pay my rent. It does put gas in my car and food in my refrigerator. It buys my books, <laughs> you know? So, um, so that's where I'm, that's where I'm, I'm at in the middle of all of that. Um, the best pop band of all time. Um, my favorites of favorites and sync, uh, 
decided they were going to reunite. And so I did happen to catch them on the MTV VMAs on Tuesday, right before I passed out. I saw my dudes on stage. It was epic. Uh, It was awesome. There's been a lot of speculation since. So JC's birthday was August 8th. And on that day, Justin Timberlake, uh, who's the, the baby of the group, had posted something about those two in the studio, which sparked a whole thing. There's been a a concentrated campaign ever since then of them just dropping Easter eggs and waiting for the fans to find them. The, the, The song that they're about to release on the 29th is in support of the movie Trolls Band Together, which comes out in, I think, November. But they can't talk about it because four of them are SAG members and, um, they're on strike and so they can't talk about the movie but the fans can talk about the movie and so um they're kind of depending on their fans to spread the word and we have been um so amid all the work stuff is also this other stuff so um dl are you using the nsync reunion as an excuse to say that you haven't been reading or writing kind of kind of i mean i've been working But in between, I've been mostly checking up on what new thing dropped, new videos, new pictures, appearances, lots of teases, lots of content. Thanks, Lance Bass, for making sure we actually, like, get content. Um, NSYNC has not released a song in 23 years. It's been since 2002. So it's, it's epic. And, uh, you know, we get it. If you don't get it, we don't care if you don't like it. (laughs) It's a glorious moment for NSYNC fans. Um, I'm looking at my bobbleheads right now and the Funkos behind them and like my little NSYNC corner back there, back there. And then, um, Fisher Price has these little, the little people dolls. Um, I did order a set, but they weren't going to ship till mid October and some people are getting theirs now. And so I'm trying to figure out when I can, how I can get mine earlier. Um, I think if I order them from the overlord, which is what I call Amazon, um, I think they ship first week in October. And so I'm going to reorder them and get them early. Uh, I'm excited about that. I got my little NSYNC mug over here. Um, I have an NSYNC t-shirt somewhere. I don't, I bought it in like 2020. Um, I don't know where it's at, but I should probably dig it up or buy a new one. I don't know. So that's been exciting. And it has actually brought me a lot of joy because, uh, it's like, I I'm, I'm a little bit of an obsessive personality and it's just a thing that I obsess over. It brings me together with people, um, that I met while I was listening to the music or while I was writing the fan fiction. Speaking of the fan fiction, I wrote a little something last week. It was the, actually the first, uh, fanfic or fic as we call it, FIC for short. I wrote my first fic since 2020. Isn't that crazy? That is crazy. It has been I have not written fan fiction in three years. It was August of 2020. I wrote my last fic. Um, So I posted a little something this week, last week, this week. When did I post that? I do not. I don't. It was last week ish. I don't remember. Last Friday, last Saturday, something. The days are all running together, Um, but I did write it. It's a shorty, about 2,500 words about a woman who meets her teen idol, J.C. Chazé, in an elevator, and the elevator malfunctions and they get stuck. There is no spice in it. I have the hardest time writing spice in fanfic lately, but I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it together. I'm going to get it together. So the other thing that I've been doing is really leaning into fandom. I do still own and operate the NSYNC Fiction website where we host all of, I'm not going to say all, but a lot of NSYNC fan fiction. We have an old archive that is a uh, read only. It's not in operation. So all the old, old stuff from like the nineties, I think are hosted there or the early two thousands. And then in 2004, they built the new archive. And that is, I bought that in 2019. I didn't buy it. I just took it. <laughs> they were going to shut it down. Uh, and I just could not bear to see it go away. 
So I took it and it was just basically there for a minute. And once we started to see rumblings of things happening in in sync land, uh, we decided to try to start bringing writers back to the archive. And so I have been busy with writing stuff, just not anything that pays. So um, writers have been coming back. We did, I think I talked on this podcast about the awesome August challenge where we, our challenge is to just write, you know, stories around a central theme. We had 10 new stories in that challenge. So 10 new stories at the archive where we hadn't had really more than one or two a month, maybe in a long while. So that was awesome. And the writers just keep writing. We have updates of like two to three, four, five stories a week. So it's been great. Um, have found a way to automate um, onto Twitter. I'm never calling it X ever, ever uh, to automate from the fanfic website to Twitter for it to pop up when a new story pops up. Similarly to when I make a blog post um, on my blog um, that pops up like automatically um, I'm doing the same for the archive. So it's fun. It's, uh, you know, it's fun. It's uh, a way to like decompress and like not think about anything but fun stuff to get into the music and talk to your friends and daydream and think about what's coming in the future. Uh, if I'm being honest, I don't think we're getting um, a tour. It, I, it'll be a miracle if we do maybe a performance or two. I think Justin is going on tour with his album that comes out in 2024 I think the title is JT6. I think it's a collaboration with Timberland and a whole bunch of other people. Um, My worst fear is that all of this new song stuff, it's just to push the movie, but it's also a vehicle to get Justin attention, which um, I don't like. (laughs) I do not. I don't mind Justin. Um, I like Justin in the group. I'm not a big Timberlake solo fan. I do like some of his songs. I don't mind the man himself, but um, I prefer him in the in the group form. Um, so we'll see what happens. There's lots of hints still. Uh, step two is the release of the song. So says their manager. And then we'll see, you know, what happens after that. The movie comes out, I think, in November. I do not plan to go see it. Um, I don't really have much interest in Trolls. That's why I'm hoping there's more than just the song on the album. But uh, also the song is a bop. It's called Better Place. And the lyrics are pretty awesome. And I can hear my boy JC all the way up and through it. So I'm into it. I'm into it. Um, Getting lots of pictures, lots of videos, lots of chatter, lots of more to come. Lots of this is the first step. So we'll see. They aren't going to tell us (laughs) outright. They love to keep us guessing. But NSYNC doesn't do anything halfway. So we'll see, you know, what what comes Um, I am not the type of person that, you know, oh, whatever, whatever they're offering, let's just take the scraps. No, no, do it right or keep it. So uh, we'll see. Anywho, um, so there's that. Um, Books. I have sold 85 copies of Elysium since release. So we are pushing up on 100 uh, soon. I mean, I didn't do hardly any promo this week. I'm surprised if I sold any copies. I didn't even check. I haven't checked um, reviews. It's just been, it's been a full, full week between work and NSYNC and catching up and so much stuff. It's been a full week. So uh, I am not surprised. I haven't hit a hundred yet. I did not run any ads. I didn't do hardly any promo. I, um, did the best I could. And this is just such a good time that to keep reminding myself that I'm not a full-time writer. Writing is not my job. These books don't pay any bills. <laughs> they just barely support themselves. But like, I haven't quite covered what I spent in editing yet. So I did editing and I did, um, I did a full uh, wrap cover for this book. And so I'm I'm just trying to pay myself back right now is, is what that's about. The book hasn't been out a month yet. I don't think when did it come out the 29th. So the book hasn't been out a month yet. 
So we're just riding the wave. This week is a big week for book sales. Um, it's a big push. So Stuff Your E-Reader is coming September 20th through 22nd. I do have a free book in that giveaway. So uh, if you're on my email list, I am going to be sending out a newsletter about Stuff Your E-Reader. So be on the lookout. If you are not on my newsletter, get on my newsletter. Um, it's not going to be anything big, fancy, schmancy, smash, but it will have the website where you can go grab gobs of free books. There are about 2,400 free books in the giveaway. And there are some books by Black authors. We have been really pushing to try to get Black authors into this event. And so if you would be so kind as to patronize and um, try to, you know, pick up something or everything that you see. Um, Lots of of romance and romance adjacent books will be up for grabs for the 20th through the 22nd. I will let you know, do not worry. I will not be able to shut up about stuff your e-reader day. I am also doing what they call stacking. It's a a promo stack. So I'm going to lead in with a little giveaway at through free booksy which is a site that promotes of, you know, when you have a free book, you'd sign up and they'd send it out to all of their newsletter people. So we'll do free booksy and then we have stuff your Kindle. And then I'm going to close it out with um, fussy librarian, which is another um, promo site. So I have a couple other books that I'm putting on sale. Um, I might um, put a couple books. I'm thinking about putting another couple books on free. I don't know. I need to look at everything I'm doing and not overwhelm myself because I also have some things coming up in October. Uh, I'm just really trying to keep things straight because, again, this isn't my full-time job. I cannot wear myself out. I am supposed to be in a um, challenge, the 20K to 5 Days Challenge. I really should have known. I have a three-day meeting rolling right into this, and I'm not ready. I'm not ready. I haven't, I I prepped a little bit, but, um, I pulled up my document and I just, I don't know where to go from where I left off. Nothing comes to me. The people aren't talking to me. I am not in a headspace to write. I mean, really not while I'm still trying to sell the book I just released at the end of August. So I am, I told, I told my editor that I had, I was going to start a new book, um, September 13th. And she was like, ma'am, you just released a book August 29th. Are you sure? And I was like, oh yeah, I've, I've written like, you know, five or six chapters already. I already have a head start. You know, it should be good. And I'm going to do the, you know, the 20K in five days. She's like, um, okay. She's like, I really think you should rest, but okay. <laughs> Little did I know that she's, she's worked with a lot of authors. So she may have known what she was talking about. She's absolutely right. My brain is just not there. It is just, it's just not there. I do need to plan though. I do need to plan. I don't really plot, but I do need, I need a plan. I need to run it through the goal motivation conflict. I need to run it through romance of the beat. I need, I need to know what I'm talking about. So the characters can start talking to me in my head. And I like, I know where I'm going. I think I may start um, early October. I don't know. I hate to throw a date on it because um, then I like, I start tensing up about it and my brain freezes. So I don't really want to put a date on it, but sometime October, I will start writing. That will give me a good, you know, few weeks of like good writing. And um, hopefully I will have something before the end of the year to push out probably not doing a holiday short unless something just comes to me and it'll be real short, like 5,000 words short. Like, um, I think unexpected is maybe, is it eight chapters? Maybe. I don't know. Um, the Quasar brunch is like eight chapters, 10 chapters. Um, it may, that's 12,000 words. That's maybe what we'll get, but we'll see. We'll see what comes to me. I'm trying to just relax, free my mind, open, you know, open, open the windows, open the doors, etc. Um, and see what comes. I, I cannot force it. It's not, it, this is not a thing I can force. The best I can do is plan, kind of get the story in line in my head and then pray for something to come. 
it comes or it doesn't. Uh, it's not a thing I can force. So we will see what happens between now and the end of the year. But um, I did write a little fic. I do have another fanfic challenge coming up in October. We run our challenges around birthdays of the members of the group. So October 17th is Chris Kirkpatrick's birthday. He is the founder of NSYNC. He is our pineapple. We love him to pieces. So we're going to celebrate Chris beginning October 17th. And so it'll be just like Awesome August. We all write stories around a theme And then um, I have a group of writers that I'm writing with or um, I'm putting air quotes around mentoring. I don't know. Leading. I don't know. But we have a group and we're already tossing around um, challenge ideas for the winter. And then like, you know, around Valentine's Day, um, a really fun one coming up for Valentine's Day. Um, I do need I need a challenge at the end of January for Justin and Joey's birthdays. And then we roll right into NSYNC high holy season which is like march through may um so lots of stuff happening stuff going on in between that um i need to plan and write novels and like you know market books and update websites and write newsletters and slang books out here so that's what's going on I didn't read anything. If I read anything, I don't remember it. I, I feel like I finished one book. I DNF'd a lot of books because nothing was really keeping my attention. I know I have arcs coming up next week. I haven't, I don't even know what they are. Um, I haven't opened NetGalley. I already know Dr. Williams is going to tell me, don't, don't worry about them folks at NetGalley Dio. I can't do his accent. I really wish I could. He has the best North Carolina accent. Um, I'm usually really good with accents, but I can't do it. But anyway, I do call him out every episode because I know him and Audra are listening. (laughs) He did send me a message last week like, why are you always calling me out? Because I know you're listening. (laughs) I also wanted to do another shout out to Jason Graham and Audra Russell, who bought a little bit of my updated merch. And they have made some posts on their Instagram about it i so appreciate that the stuff looks really good i'm happy with it um they're actually my test subjects so uh i I, because i can't i mean i have to pay just like y'all have to pay i don't get a discount i pay the same price you guys pay so um i think they look really good Uh, the podcast merch looks good i bought a hoodie uh that says i'm sorry for what i said before i had coffee and books Um, It's like a dusty rose. It's really comfy. It's very soft. I should put it on and take a picture in it. um, Maybe tomorrow. Um, Super cute. And then I bought, they have this uh, really soft stuffed bear with a t-shirt that has my logo on it. I bought one of those. Very cute. And I bought a mouse pad that says Books by D.L. White um, because my old Books by D.L. White mouse, mouse pad is grody. It's just gross. Everything looks great. It's through Spreadshirt. Spread shop, spread shirt, I think. Um, great quality. Um, I wish I could control the pricing, but I don't. Um, I think I do to an extent, uh, but um, like the pricing is as is the best I can get it and still make any kind of profit off of it. But I did want to say thank you. Um, Jason Graham bought the joggers, which look really nice. They look really, really nice. And then Audra bought um, a podcast t-shirt. It's in a really bright yellow with the um but first books logo on it i'm super happy super super happy with them they look great i'm excited to do more merch i would like to design a little something for each book like um you know business names like brunch at ruby's dinner at sam's um leslie's curl and die like i have like all these fun business names in all of my books and um i would like to design something for each book that's like a callback, but that requires brain power and I just don't have it. <laughs> Maybe next spring. <laughs> Maybe next spring. So um last last thing I wanted to mention is I was in an issue of Atlanta magazine, the Arts and Letters edition. If you can get a hold of the uh September issue of Atlanta Magazine. I'm in it. I'm on page 70. The article was written by my good, good friend, Jacinta Howard um, of the prototype fame that Jacinta Howard, she is um, 
a skilled, skilled journalist. Um, I just love her to pieces. Any, any opportunity that she has to big up indie authors, black indie authors in particular, she's all about it. So um, really love her. Thank her. I want to thank her so much for profiling me. Um, I actually have a headshot uh, in the photo. I was very surprised when I got an email that said we want to take a picture for the magazine. What? Like my, my, my hair is a mess and I don't know how to do makeup and what, um, but I did my best. (laughs) So, um, I have a couple issues of that magazine out here. I shipped out a copy to my mom. Um, so that she'll get that on Monday. And then there were a couple of books that I hadn't sent her. Um, I didn't send her Hey Lover and I hadn't sent her Elysium. I did finally get a print copy of that. And so I sent those out to her and I put in a little card that told her not to read them. She won't try, but I just want her to know, don't even flip through it. Just don't look at it. Just look at the cover. It's real pretty. Put it in the bookcase. You don't need to be opening it. There's nothing in there for you, ma'am. There's nothing in there for you. Just just put it in the bookcase. Trust me, bro. Trust me. So um, she'll get that on Monday. I'm very excited for her to get them. She is my biggest fan. Um, so I normally give her the first print copy that I get, but I was really dragging my feet on Hey Lover and Elysium because <laughs> ah, it's a lot going on in those books. And um, Minister Angela White don't need to be looking at it. My dad won't even glance at them. So he just asks, how, how, y'all, how, y'all, how y'all books doing? But he won't even look at them. So I'm not worried about him. But my mom loves to read. And so I know it's killing her to not read them. But you don't need to be looking inside the books, ma'am. And anyone that knows her, tell her, don't be looking inside them books. So I think I've rambled enough. I think that's all the talking that I wanted to get out. I don't know what I'm reading. I'm not planning on writing anything. I'm just going to chill. I'm going to plan probably. I don't know. I do need to like pull out the laptop, the brand new laptop that I had to buy because it died right after I published Elysium. See, it it just the book like like fried the laptop is how hot it is. Can I say that? Oh, probably not. Um. I'm not writing anything. I don't know what I'm reading, but I am going to lay in the bed with my Kindle and my Roku remote and relax and drink coffee and eat Cheez-Its and chill out because I can. (laughs) That's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to rest this week because I have to fly to California next week and that is just, I'm going to hit the ground running and run all week until I get on the plane on Friday. It's, it's going to be a time. And then the new NSYNC song comes out on Friday and also Justin's movie comes out on Friday. I'm going to be a very busy girl, fandom wise, book wise, reading wise at the end of next week, like the 29th. So I'm going to rest until then. Let's not fall back into burnout Let's not burn the candle at both ends. We don't have to. We don't have to. Truth be told, ain't nobody looking for the next book but me and about nine people. So let's just take the pressure off ourselves. Let's get back to like making writing fun. Let's have a good time with it. It'll come when it's ready. You know the people in your head won't shut up when they're ready to come out. And so... Until then, let's just chill. There's one other thing I wanted to talk about, and I totally forgot what it was. So I guess we'll talk about it next week. That brings us to the end of today's episode. I appreciate you being here for this chat. I'm going to drink my coffee and edit this episode and get it up everywhere and then enjoy my weekend. I hope you enjoy your weekend and have a superlative week. And uh, we'll talk again next weekend, but the weekend after that, there will be no episode because I will be recovering from my week in California. So that weekend of September 29th, September 30th, there will be no episode. I'm saying that, but 
watch me get up and actually record an episode. But I'm just preparing you for no episode because I probably won't be reading. I definitely won't be writing. But we'll see what happens. All right. Talk to you soon. <laughs>